Okay, we're going to talk about One Move to Better Golf by Carl Lauren. This book was originally written in 1975. Uh, it's been reprinted twice. Uh, last time, or for this particular book, was 2015. Um, so that's a 40-year stretch. Uh, generally, books don't get uh, reprinted 40 years after they were first published unless they've got some good information in them, and this one does. Uh, now this is the large format book. It's available in a smaller format. Uh, it's the same book, same information. Uh, so whichever one works for you, that's fine. Uh, and we get to the chapters. Uh, chapter 1, 2, and 3 are really the core information of this book. He describes this move with your shoulder and how to incorporate it into your golf swing. Uh, chapters 4, 5, and 6, uh, to be honest, are really filler chapters. You know, whenever I review books, I talk to you about uh, what's the core, and it's real common for people to add filler chapters, either at the beginning or the end. Uh, the reason is, you know, if you've got a great idea, sometimes it doesn't fill out a whole book. Uh, this is an example, but it's pretty hard to sell a book if it's only 50 pages long. Uh, so they fill it out with some additional information. The rest of the information is good, but it's not really pertinent to the core message of this book, which is this move with your shoulder. Uh, chapter 1 uh, talks about this shoulder move, and it is a shoulder move, and uh, how to start using it. Uh, a couple of highlights from this chapter. He talks about overcoming the instinct to hit at the ball with the right side. Uh, he's definitely not a right side player, definitely, definitely not a hitter. Uh, he's uh, definitely a swinger uh, in the golf swing. Uh, then he also talks about starting your swing with the left shoulder. Uh, by that he means at the uh, takeaway. At the very beginning of the back swing, the, your first move should be with your shoulders. Not with your feet, not with your hips, but with your shoulders, and specifically your left shoulder should turn back. That's the very first move he gives you. A uh, couple of examples here. A uh, couple of graphics. He talks about turning the shoulder here. Uh, these you can see he's talking about pushing the shoulder back. Uh, on the next page, he's got an exercise that he recommends you do. Have someone stand in front of you with their hand and try to, when you turn, try to push your shoulder forward so you hit the hand. The idea is to make you conscious of the fact that you should be pushing that shoulder around and that shoulder will pull everything else around in your swing. So the shoulders pull the chest which pulls the hips which pulls the legs and everything pulls around and as you come around you've got a really nice tight swing in the back swing. A um, couple of quotes here uh, that are interesting. Uh, Almost every missed shot is the result of the right side overpowering the left at the beginning of the downswing. Uh, when you have found a way to subdue those right side instincts, uh, that's the quick critical moment when your backswing can move forward. Uh, so, let me say, he definitely talks about having a passive right side, and uh, really your left side is doing most of the work in the golf swing. Now he's got four fundamentals in the next chapter. Uh, and he takes, takes the shoulder move and he applies it to these four fundamentals. Uh, uh, the first fundamental is illustrated here. It's the axis. And that is you turn your shoulders around your spine. Think of your spine as being the, the middle post on a T. You don't tilt it back or forth. You just turn around your spine. Uh, your central Second fundamental is keeping is this one is keeping the big radius with your arm. Uh, mostly, you want to keep that arm straight, but you want to keep it uh, uh, out and away from your body so you have a large radius. Fund fundamental number three is keeping on plane, and fundamental number four, I think, along with the first one, the axis, are the two most important ones uh, when it comes to this book. And that's your wind-up. Uh, like I said, he talks about you turn with your shoulders, which pulls everything around. You don't really use the other muscles in the backswing, but that ensures that your body stays, stays taut 
all the way around. There's, there's no slack in your backswing. If you're, if you're using your hips, you're going to have some slack between your hips and your shoulders. Or if you're using your feet in the backswing, you're going to have some slack all the way up. So he wants you to eliminate the slack in your backswing. And there's the quote, it removes the slack from your backswing. Uh, chapter 3 really takes the previous four fundamentals and breaks them out into more detail. Uh, the first quote I've got highlighted on this page is uh, uh, maintaining the vertical axis. Uh, it eliminates the uh, one of the common causes of swaying in the back swing. He doesn't believe in swaying or moving back and forth. You should turn around that axis that is your... Um, spine. So there's more on the first fundamental, which is turning around the axis. There's more on the next fundamental, which is maintaining your radius. The third fundamental, which is keeping on plane. And the fourth fundamental, which is creating a wind-up. Uh, and he uses a shoulder move to support all of these fundamentals. Uh, it may it sounds simple that just a shoulder move with one shoulder could uh, have this much effect, but I think he lays out a pretty good case that uh, following the shoulder move has this much effect on your uh, uh, entire backswing and downswing. Now we go on to chapter four. And uh, like I said, this is where he starts to break out into a little bit more filler. Uh, you notice the first part right here is about your grip. Uh, you know, he talks about things in this chapter about maintaining a neutral grip, but also your stance, posture, uh, your alignment, and your setup routine. Uh, all of that's good information, but it's kind of veers away from the core message of the book, which is using your the shoulder move and how it affects your swing. Uh, it's good information, but it's not core to this particular book. Uh, the next next move is, or next chapter, is called Applying the Move to the Short Game. Uh, this is where I think he pushes the analogy a little bit too far. Uh, he starts talking about using the shoulder move in uh, when you're in the sand trap or when you're putting. Uh, and I think that's just pushing the analogy just a little bit too far. The uh, information about the uh, full swing is really good with the shoulder move and it does apply to the short game as well uh, but when you start talking about putting I think I think that's just taking it a little bit too far uh, chapter six which is uh, titled how to make the move work on the course uh, it's really just a tips and tricks uh, section uh, again, it, it's more just stuff editing here. Here, If you look at it, it's like how to hit a draw, how to fade, how to hit a low shot, uh, on plane with ease, how to tee up the ball, how to play in the rain, uh, on counting your blessings. I'm not sure how that has to do with the shoulder move. I mean, there's good information here, uh, but... Uh, Again, doesn't have much to do with the actual uh, original meaning or the core message of this book, which is the shoulder move. And that is uh, One Move to Better Golf by Carl Lauren. Uh, you can get it in multiple formats. And uh, it's a book I recommend. Uh, like I said, the first three chapters uh, is the core of the book, but uh, yeah, I fully recommend that uh, you get this book. I think it's got some good information. Uh, you don't think that one move or, or one little idea could make a big deal in your golf swing, but uh, I think it lays out a good case that it does.